Yo, what is up, guys? This is, of course, your boy Bernie here along with Pete and Brad. What's up, guys? What it do? And today, guys, we're going to go over a couple topics here. Um, clearly, I, I thought a good one that we kind of came up with the last week, um, shout out to Brad, uh, was that we were doing the air pre well, What I titled it was called air pressure check, right? This is where, you know, you check your, you know, it's getting cold, winter's coming, and you want to check the air pressure in your tires. And we want to see if, you know, there's a hole in there or not. And uh, I'm somehow equating this to basketball. I have no idea how, but... Nevertheless, we are equating it to basketball as we are trying to look at the air pressure check for all uh, 30 teams and figuring out, you know, with a couple of them, which ones seem to be okay, which one seems to be like a real record, and then which one seems to be a little bit uh, fugazi, if you will. Um, and I'm sure Brad and Pete have a lot to talk about when it comes to the Fugazi part. But nevertheless, let's move over to the live scene and talk about these records here. And again, this is coming from our other video that we did a little bit earlier. If you guys are interested in checking that video out, we used I think this might be something that we do weekly. Um, so that way, you know, it helps us from not going every day talking about every single thing, but really just recapping the week. Um, so if you haven't checked that video out, go and check that out. It's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I definitely recommend you check that video out. But with all the talking there, let's move on to the records here. As you guys can see in the Eastern Conference, we have the 76ers in first place, Boston in second, and so on and so forth, with the bottom teams being the Wizards and the Pistons. Meanwhile, in the Western Conference, we have the Denver Nuggets and the Dallas Mavericks at one and two, respectively, with the Utah Jazz and the abysmal Memphis Grizzlies at one and eight. Um, why don't I start with you, Brad, who, you know, as we check our, our air pressure and our tires, as we're looking to see what teams are real, what team, you know, what team has a hole in it, you know, what is your assessment or what's one team that you want to highlight? I mean, I think it has to be the Mavericks for me just because, I mean, shit, I, they're seven and two, you know, which is pretty impressive in, in week three. But still, they, ha they haven't really played anybody. I think my call last week was that they were going to lose to the Raptors, which they did. And then they played the Clippers, which I thought would be another tough game for them. That was before the Clippers traded for James Harden and turned <laughs> into a pumpkin team. So, <laughs> like, I, I still don't know how to place this team because they are 7-2. and two And, you know, I mean, I guess they play the Pelicans today. So we'll see how they deal with people like Zion and B.I. And Although the Pelicans are missing most of their core people. So that's also kind of an easy game. We'll see. We'll see. I don't. I don't know how to place this team. It's weird to me. Their offense looks real. Like I believe in Luca, Kyrie. They just generate so much attention on offense that it gives mm -hmm. everybody open looks. Like every any time I watch their games, I just see, you know, Derek Jones Jr. wide open for three. Grant Williams wide open for three. Maxi Kleber mm -hmm. wide open for three. So it's their offense is very real. It's just I don't think that the level of defense they've been playing is sustainable with their personnel. But we've yet to see a team really like challenge that or be able to shut off their offense. I'm on board with you. I, I honestly am still much more negative than you are with that team. Um, I still really don't buy it. I think they're they really have played no one. I think like you you alluded to it, but like I have to harp on that. Like they really have played no one, and the teams they have played are usually down a guy or two. So, uh, I I'll need to see it against better teams. One, but also I mean most importantly with the. How often can we talk about it? Like, the regular season doesn't matter as much. Once this team gets to the playoffs, I'd like to see this team do anything in the playoffs. Once that happens, then I'll start to buy it. And I know that's a high bar to set for any team, but, I mean, when you have people saying this team is like an actual title contender, I mean, come on, dude. They're yeah, actually, that's crazy, yeah. <laughs> there's got to be some semblance of defense on your team to win anything. Like, I... I I don't know how many times people can get fooled by this level of, you know, mediocrity on one side of the court. It's, it, it's just not good enough. So yeah, I, I don't know. They're better than I thought they would be, but ultimately I think they're capped by a bad coach and realistically, like they, all the same problems that always exist for this team are still there. It's not like, it's not like it should be that shocking that Luca can, can run off some games against bad teams. You know, like, I think yeah. that's, that's something that I think people are maybe overreacting to. Like, Luca is one of the five best players in the league. He should be able to get a team to seven and two when you're playing that that level of uh, 
quality in terms of the teams you're up against. But yeah. And when he plays the Clippers, he's the best player in the league because he spanks mm-hmm. those boys. The way, did you guys see that Kendrick Perkins video? <laughs> yes. <It> was <laughs> That was hilarious. I couldn't help but thinking, like, could you imagine, like, this is a, just a terrible thing to say. I'm going to say it anyway. A smell radiating off that chair as he was hitting it. Like, it was just awful. I didn't like any of it. It was so uncomfortable, the whole video. It was it was bizarre, man. Really, I, I was cracking up. I thought that was hilarious. I, he's, was, not he's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's not wrong, but boy, ESPN has changed in my day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you know, ES, you know, that's a conversation that we can get in. I love getting into that conversation about ESPN and uh, you know, kind of their their business model that they decide to go with. But uh, you know, going back to the Mavericks, you know, I I think this team is. I'm not saying that they're title contenders, but they're definitely better than I thought they were going to be. You know, last year. You know they, they they definitely struggled. I just think this year they might be able to sneak into that four to five, uh, maybe six would probably be more realistic for this team. Um, but I think this team, you know, offensively with with Luca balling out, with Kyrie now kind of kind of getting to his own, they finally have a big like Derek Lively that again has been kind of the surprise of of the rookies just in terms of the way that people didn't really know what they were expecting from him. Um, but I, I'm I'm excited for this team moving forward. Um, but like you said, P, it, it's definitely a wait and see. You know, this team has to show it in the playoffs. Like we've seen this team many many times again do well in the regular season. We've seen this team get into the playoffs, beat uh, a Phoenix Suns team. Uh, you know, gone to the I believe they've gone to the Western Conference Finals. If, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but you know, I, I think this, yeah, one time right. So again, it is like you said, a wait and see with this team. But uh, so far, so good. You know, no holes uh, in this. Well, I mean, obviously there's there's holes, but not enough to uh, create a gash. You need to go to the side of the road and uh, uh, wait for AAA to come get you. Yeah, I mean, I do want to say that I think if they made the playoffs, which I mean, it's looking like it right now. I think I, my earlier take on them was that they would be hell for anyone to deal with, just because like. Luca and Kyrie, I just don't see how you stop them in the half court. Like in the playoffs, it's all about half court mm-hmm. basketball, and right. they have that advantage every single time. You cannot do anything with Luca and Kyrie on the court. And even Jaden Hardy next to those two coming off the bench is a huge punch. And then Tim Hardaway Jr., another huge punch. I think if they're able to upgrade like some of their role players, like Derek Jones Jr., he's nice for eating, you know, regular season innings. But like in the playoffs, if you can upgrade that position or like get Josh Green to get more confident or something, they could actually, I don't know, man. I don't know how you would, like, I, if I put them up against most teams in the West, I see them, like, beating them, honestly, if they can somehow upgrade their role players to sustain a better defense in the playoffs. Because their offense will be fine. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I need a lot more than <laughs> what I've seen so far. It, right now, if they were in the playoffs, they'd be going against, they'd be playing Sacramento, all right? I think, I think they would beat them. I, they would run Sabonis off the floor. Luca and Kyrie would do disgusting things to that man. Sacramento is one of the very few teams I actually do think they could beat. Like, let's say OKC slipped one spot down. I think they'd have trouble with OKC. To be honest with you, I think they'd have trouble with Houston. I think they'd have. I think they'd get smoked by Minnesota. We need to talk Minnesota. About okay, yeah, that's a matchup problem though, because that's why I thought they, they looked so disgustingly smoked. bad. Ah, uh, yeah, LA smokes them. Healthy New Orleans, healthy Phoenix. I think all these teams absolutely beat the brakes off of Dallas. I think honestly, Sacramento is like the only team there that I think actually is like in trouble if they run into Dallas. I think that's actual problems for them. Besides that, though, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just don't buy it. We, I, that's fair. we just, have, that's fair. We just have never seen. I mean, honestly, and this is it kind of pains me because I don't really like to pick against Luca. I mean, he's genuinely one of the best players I've ever seen in my entire life at any point in their career. He's he's so unbelievably good. But I just think the playoffs are a different animal, you know, like that that level of defense that they they ramp up to. I just think it's Dallas is there's literally nobody on their team that has that second gear to get to on that side of the ball i i don't know Mm -hmm. maybe that's just me like overstating that but i just think like think about that the western conference finals last year right it was a sweep but it was still pretty high level basketball from the lakers and denver i can't even imagine 
that Dallas team in that series. And that was a sweep. I still can't even imagine what they would have done against Denver in that series. Like it was oh, nothing, a, nothing, absolutely. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. the Lakers. I think the Lakers would have swept them last season. Like in in honestly, a lot of these teams. I don't know. I again, I'm just harping on Dallas, but I just can't overstate how bad their defense is. There's honestly like only two teams, three teams that are worse. Yeah, that's definitely fair. They're relying on Derek Lively as a rookie to kind of anchor them, mm-hmm. and that yeah. can only like, take you so far. Yeah. Again. I, I have to say, he has been super, super impressive. Way, way, way farther ahead than I thought he was. But, I, again, this is maybe the old head in me. I think if you're harping a lot of your – or hedging a lot of your bets on a rookie, like a 20-year-old rookie who really didn't have a consistent full season in their one season in college, like, that's not the type of guy that makes the difference in a playoff run. You know, like it's it's fine and dandy for the first ten games of the regular season. That's cool, awesome, but I mean that's really like truly special stuff if he could carry that all the way through the playoffs too, which yeah. true they would need. They need that desperately. Yeah, definitely. Um, and let us know in the comment section down below what do you guys make of the Dallas Mavericks? Are you a believer in their record at seven and two currently as of November twelfth, or do you think that this team has more holes uh, than we than we then we see, uh, I guess, surface level. Uh, let us know in the comment section down below.